Welcome to the Leica GS07 Quick Start video number 11. This video focuses on data collection within Leica Captivate, starting with an introduction to the Measure app and measuring our first line. For this video, we'll be completing a straightforward topo as shown here. It is advised to find a similar area to be able to replicate this video whilst learning data collection. First, we need to make sure that the job we created in video 6, My First Job, is active. With that done, we can enter the Measure app. Inside this app, we see the screen is initially split in two, with information on the left and the 3D viewer on the right. To start with, the left side shows us information such as point ID and our antenna height. This is useful and it's good to know where it is, but actually, we're going to toggle this left hand side into the coding page. Once done, we can start to code by simply typing, for example, B, C. We then get a drop down list of all our codes with the BC code highlighted for back of curb. We can just tap on it to confirm the selection and then Leica Captivate automatically creates a code box for us with this code. We can see that using this code will create a line and that it is the first line using this code in our job. Now whenever we make a measurement, the code box that's highlighted in green will get assigned to that measurement. So we can measure the first point, walk a few paces and measure a second point and see that a line is created as both points were assigned the BC code. Next, we'll look at expanding from a simple straight line using the line work, for example, to create a three point arc. We do this by interacting with the line symbol inside our code box, as this symbol is actually a button. When we tap on it, we're taken to a screen allowing us to select our line work. This is where we can select a starter spline or a curve or even have our line close back to its starting point. So let's select a beginner three point arc and then press OK. Straight away, we see that the line work symbol has changed, indicating that we're going to start measuring a curve. So we move up to the start of the curve and measure the point. The symbol then updates again, letting us know we need to measure the midpoint, so we can measure that. The symbol then updates once more, showing us that we're now returning to measure straight sections as we're finishing the curve with the next measurement. We can then continue to use this same functionality to fully measure this curve line. Next, we can move on to measuring a second line using the same code. The easiest way to do this is to once again start to type in the code and select it from the list that appears. This now creates a new code box for us with the same code but with a different number. That's because like a Captivate automatically knows that this is a new entry and therefore will be a new line. We can then repeat the steps that we did previously, simply walking along and measuring our line. We can continue this and repeat it numerous times so that all of our curb lines are completed. Here, that's just three curb lines as shown. The next coding function for us to look at is measuring attributes. And for this, we'll measure a simple point rather than a line. The process really is the same. We start to type our code to bring up our code list, for example, TR, and then we select the desired code, tree. As before, we can see that the code box is automatically created, although there is a difference because this time the line work symbol inside the code box is just a point, not a line, informing us that only a point will be stored. Before we store the measurement, we can use the tree code as an example of where we might want to enter additional information to be stored. To do this, we tap on the notepad within the code box, taking us to an attributes panel where we can enter our additional information. This code has actually been configured to ask for three specific bits of information. The tree type with a selection box, the trunk diameter, and the drip diameter. So we can fill those in now. Although additional attributes could be created by pressing the new button. Those three are all we need for now. So we can press OK to store it and then measure the point. We can repeat this process for any other points or lines where attributes need to be stored with codes. Here, we just had two trees to measure. The final coding functionality that we will look at is adding a new code on the fly. This is for when we have an object which does not have a suitable code in the code list. We do this by starting to type our desired code, for example, CB for catch basin. As before, the code list is displayed, but this time nothing is highlighted because there's no matching code. So we can simply press enter or OK on our keypad and a code box with this new code is created for us. By default, it's created as a point code, but we could change that by tapping on the line work symbol. 
However, here a point is correct, so we can leave that and simply measure. Now for this video, we measured in a specific order, but that really was only for the purpose of this video and this explanation. The coding imposes no limits here, as we use the skills that we've just learnt to complete the survey of our chosen area. So for now, we can bring this video to a close and continue to work on our topo. Thank you for watching.